Is this you? Do you feel trapped? You don't know which direction they go. You don't know what to believe. In this video, let us talk about food preparedness. Food preparedness is one of the four essentials in building a self-reliant um, preparedness package. It is basically like an insurance policy. In most cases of society, citizens are dependent upon a system that is a just-in-time supply system that supplies food, pharmaceuticals, and fuel for 72 hours based on a populace that is in need of the products of that community. As President Reagan once stated many years ago, we are a society that is nine mils from starvation. Is that a system that you want to be part of? Or would you prefer building your own self-reliant insurance policy to protect you and your family? Let's talk about food preparedness. So the bottom line is you and your family are surrounded by threats that could change your life temporarily or permanently with a simple spark. Just look around you. You have a choice. Be part of the 10% who prepare and remain vigilant or part of the 90% who will not be prepared and become a statistic most likely. Sounds crazy, huh? Look around you today. Think about the major natural disasters in America the past five years alone. Droughts, floods, fires, hurricanes, and tornadoes, and heat. All of these alone impacts our nation's ability to grow food and feed our animals. Now consider the impact COVID-19 had on our nation and transportation to keep the supply chain moving and stores stocked. We aren't even including man-made events that impacted citizens and regions over the past five years. This also does not include imports that we're dependent upon. Think of the number of resources that are shipped from outside the country, China specifically. If all of these were to stop, how would our society continue? So levels of food preparedness. Circumstances should determine a degree and level of food preparedness that fits your situation. What type of threat may it be? Natural man-made technological hazard, type disasters, financial position. What is your ability to obtain food short and long term? Ability to store and maintain food stock, available space to grow food, external threats and internal threats to your food inventory special diets and needs of your family members. So what is the starting point? Stage one is your initial disaster event cutting off your access to normality. Always remember, you need to ask, what is the threat to you? How are you vulnerable to the threat? How do you mitigate the threat? What's the short and long-term fix? short-term notice versus advanced notice to the threat or change in normality in your life. <clears throat> there are numerous causes that could impact your ability not just to obtain food but to pay for it. It may not be a natural or man-made or technological event. You could lose your job, you could be in a car accident and be out of work for six months, or you may be diagnosed with a medium or long-term illness. All of these things are potential events that could change your ability to have the income to continue a lifestyle that you and your family are used to having. Pre-planning and putting your food aside or your self-reliant um, insurance policy will help you sustain that normality for the duration of the event or for as long as you have put resources back. Immediate preparedness. The federal government recommends you maintain a three, no, 10 day supply of non-perishable food. Recommendations. Choose food your family will eat. Duh, that seems like a no brainer, doesn't it? 
I know numerous folks that go and buy bulk food and they've never opened a can uh, to consume it to see how it impacts their body. Most preparedness long-term food is high in sodium. Does your current health allow you to intake high levels of sodium? If not, how are you going to offset it? Remember any special dietary needs. Avoid foods that will make you thirsty. Choose salt-free crackers, whole grain cereals, and canned foods with high liquid content. You can check ready.gov food for more information. Immediate preparedness. Why would a person who's trying to be prepared and not be a part of the average populace prepare for three days like the other 90% of society? I believe it's insanity. Why? Just because you have three days, seven days, 10 days, 30 days, if you are being like everyone else, that means you're all going to run out of food at the same time. And you're going to be back in the rat race fighting for the last jar of peanut butter. Recommend your initial short-term food stock be at least a 10-day supply. This can be a variation of food supplies. Recommend either 10 days of home stock if you are not mobile between work and home. If you do work, you should keep at least three days of food stock in a go bag uh, or a bug out bag. What if you are in a situation where you're stuck at work and you can't get home? You can't predict what the situation is, but you can pre-plan to ensure that you have the essentials that you need to survive, such as food and water. Eating versus survival. You should be planning in advance to eat healthy and stock nutritional foods and vitamins could be the difference between life and death. Past studies by the federal government and other agencies state 90% of the populace will die in the first 12 months of an EMP, a pandemic, or a total collapse. Diseases and starvation are two of the major causes of death. Point being, you must eat nutritional foods throughout the emergency period. Don't become a statistic. Prepare. How much food is needed? When you're planning for yourself or a family of multiple members, how do you know how much and what type of food you will need? We know a single person requires approximately 1,055 gallons of water per year. A household of two requires 188 rolls of toilet paper per year. Not important. Just follow up with this topic in the past collapse of Venezuela, where individuals were walking across the nation's border into surround, surrounding countries just to get toilet paper. Food. See the next slides, which offer several links to food calculators offering types and quantities needed. Plan for roughly 2,000 calories per day for females and roughly 2,500 to 3,000 calories per day for males. Children will be less. Your activity level could dictate less or more. You can go to www.health.gov for more information. So this is a food assessment worksheet. It's very simple. It's guidelines to keep in mind the average person, again, requires roughly 2,000 calories a day. In a SHTF situation, those needs will surely go up. It is better to have more calories or servings than not enough. Some sources say to focus on calories. Others say serving size. It will be up to you how you want to base your quantity stored. You basically plug in the number of adults, number of children, and don't forget your pets. How long you estimate your planning for? Or is it hours? Is it days? Is it weeks? Is it months? Servings needed per day um, per person, the six grain, uh, four each fruit and vegetable, two to three dairy, six ounces of meat and protein. Total servings needed and you plug your numbers in. And you can calculate this to come up with totals that are estimates of what you think you will need. The nutritional requirements, here's a chart that basically shows you for the age groups from calories all the way down through um, iron, zinc, iodine, selenium, and so forth. Again, you want to, to plan for um, your needs, but you also need to remember you want to plan to have the best you can healthy food. So the levels of preparedness, the short-term preparedness is your 10-day to one-year preparedness. 
What do you and your family need to survive without external support? Remember, this is your insurance policy. The 10-day food supply can be any assortment of your choosing. Consider including some dehydrated meals or foods with high protein and calories in the event you must go mobile away from your primary food stock. You should also consider the nature of the threat, such as loss of power, fire, ice, floods, and so forth. Will you lose the food in your freezer if the electricity remains out for 10 days? What is your plan? Do you have other options available for heating food if required? Propane, gas, fireplace, solar. Can you protect the food supplies you have stocked during your preparedness? Remember, you may have food and those around you may not. This is why it's important that you plan for your family and then encourage your neighbors and your community to plan also. This is why Hope for Survival encourages and um, trains and pushes the five mile radius plan for you and your community. The mid-level preparedness, this is one to three years. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Just think EMP or CME. This degree of preparedness is more intense and requires more time and funding to achieve a total of 36 months of preparedness. Storage space becomes an issue as your stock builds. You must also consider maintaining your stock supplies at multiple locations in the event you are robbed or you suffer a disaster at your home. When you are in a one to three year stage of preparedness, you should consider the fact you may have to relocate from your main bug in location. If so, can you physically move your supplies? Nutritional value uh, becomes critical at this juncture. Long term, three years and beyond. Scary, huh? This stage of preparedness is normally not a good sign. Most likely some form of major disaster and or devastation has taken place in the nation. This could be as vast as an EMP or a tragedy where your life has changed and you have lost everything. Hopefully you will recover faster than the 36 months. If possible, raising a garden and farm animals would be wise. Food storage options, three years to unknown. Canned food purchased from a store is typically good eight to 30 months. Canned meats that you can buy from a store, five to 15 years. This is mostly from your preparedness stores. Dried foods in buckets, 20 to 25 years. Home canning, variants of opinion, but most say up to five years. Experience suggests otherwise. Dehydrated meals varies from 10 to 25 years based on type and the manufacturer. Growing a garden, seasonal, terrain, and it takes experience. Hunting game if available. It is best to try the food before they are needed to ensure you like the food and if your body tolerates the food. So again, sodium is a big player in the long-term food. Learn to conduct your own tests on each type of food to determine if the product is edible at the time of need. Food choices. Purchase canned food with the latest expiration date. Date is the sell by date for stores. It can be consumed after the expiration date if the can is not swollen or damaged. Consider identifying local stores offering case lots um, sales. So you have an option. You can either go where there's stock or you can do nothing and wait until the shelves are empty. One thing on expired foods, um, if the cans are expired uh, and the cans are not damaged, you can give it time and the products are still good. Or if you're not comfortable with that, you can take the numerous vegetables and you can dump them in a pot, mix them up and uh, cook them into a vegetable soup and you can put that in glass jars um, and freeze them for a later date, uh, or you can consider um, dehydrating them. Dehydrated single pack foods offer great short and long term options. Just add hot water as the needed ingredient. Offers great options for mobility, lighter, less expensive compared to MREs or meals ready to eat, non dehydrated type. Available online in many sports stores. 
uh, carries the variation of different types of meals. Canning food through the pressure canning process, it requires extended heat source. Uh, we prefer this type of method. Preparation and cooking time, uh, time consuming, um, offers a wide variety of choices in vegetables, fruit, meat, and poultry, extends the life of garden products, more nutritional than dehydrated and store-bought canned foods. Uh, caution of the safety factor using a, a pressure canner. Um, it is safe. You just have to be cautious and follow the steps um, needed. Dried food long-term storage uh, offers many options and choices, beans, rice, pasta, wheat, sugar, uh, flour, and so forth. If possible, consider alternate storage location away from other food options. Offers many options and choices. Um, you can can in glass jars with oxidizers. You can use Mylar bags uh, and then place in uh, five gallon food grade buckets for storage. Or you can even buy the number 10 cans that's already packaged and you simply store your cans in a dry, semi-cool location. Food dehydrator or freeze dryer uh, requires equipment and time, offers the least amount of storage space of all options, long-term availability, less weight and space when carried in a bug out bag. Um, the dehydrator and freeze dryer offers you great options. It is time consuming uh, running the dehydrator to dehydrate or to freeze dry um, your selection. Um, it is not difficult to do. Again, um, it does take time and it is equipment that costs money. Someone recently asked me about purchasing a freeze dryer. Uh, the average uh, the average cost for a freeze dryer is in the neighborhood of about three thousand three thousand dollars plus, uh, or a good uh, dehydrator you can get for around two fifty two hundred fifty dollars plus. If you don't have your other preparedness uh, basics in hand already, um, it would be hard to justify spending three thousand dollars on a piece of equipment that only focuses on food. So if you don't have water purification methods and things of that nature, uh, I would hold off buying my freeze dryer. Some websites for food preps uh, are listed here. Um, you can take your pick. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, Carolina Ready Supply in Wayne, um, Waynesville, North Carolina. Um, you can give them a call. They will even offer you suggestions. And if you're in the town of Waynesville, um, you can stop by and um, the two owners of the store uh, will actually take the time and talk to you about um, food preparedness. They have great advice there. So these are some of the basics for uh, your food preparedness. Uh, we can go into a lot greater detail, but these are the basics for it. Um, you can break it out in a session just for canning. Um, you can set up a group in your community and have canning classes. Um, it, it, again, it's not difficult. Um, it is relatively low cost. You're basically buying the ingredient that you're going to can and your um, jars, lids, and rings. Uh, if you buy them by the case, the jar and the ring comes with it. Um, they have gone up in price considerably in the last three years, uh, about $4 a case, uh, maybe a little more depending where you're at. But it does give you an option or you can go the route of dry foods in jars again, um, putting your dry food um, in the jar. There's, depending what kind of food it is, there's some other minor steps to include. Uh, and you want to get some oxidizers to put in the jar with you because you want that lid to seal tight, airtight, uh, or mylar bags uh, and oxidizers as well to basically vacuum seal um, your product and then store in a five gallon bucket. Food grade type, uh, get the lid uh, sealed on there and then set it aside. Um, so you got to make the pick on what's good for you. If you're just now starting out to put food away, uh, I would 
I would sincerely look at uh, my getting my base food um, plan in place. What I'm looking for, I wouldn't just go bulk buy, but plan on a on a menu for a healthy diet and um, start start building up on it, and then uh, start looking for 25, 50 pound bags of beans and rice and pastas and things of that nature to quickly build up on how many days you have uh, food set aside for. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me at preparedness101 at protonmail.com. You can visit our website at hopeforsurvival.com. Uh, read through the numerous articles on there. You will find some on uh, food preparedness. And um, also uh, in our YouTube uh, menu, uh, we have numerous um, items on here on food preparedness and uh, <clears throat> setting, setting up uh, items and storage. And uh, even there's a video for pressure canning chicken. Um, uh, a good, good rule of thumb on pressure canning is uh, get a good book. Uh, typically, our canner came with a uh, with a canning book inside, and it uh, gives you the basics uh, for canning. Whether you're canning fruit, you're canning vegetables, you're canning meat, it tells you exactly um, how to do the process. And it's not uh, it's not a 500 page book. It's maybe maybe 50 pages for canning everything. Okay, so. Um, don't let it intimidate you uh, for any cause at all. Um, your future and survival may depend on the time you invest now to set aside for uh, building your, your food plan. So um, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, be blessed, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bravo Echo out.